Hello and welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you some navigation shortcuts and configuration tips for OpenTX on the Jumper T18 and the TX16S. Before I get into the content, the first thing I want to do is welcome all the new subscribers to RC Video Reviews. It's been quite a month for growth on the channel, so I appreciate everybody that's joined us. I also want to give a shout out to all the regular contributors out there, and you guys know who you are because we talk all the time. I also need to let you know that 63% of the people who watch these videos don't subscribe. If every one of those return visitors were to just hit that little subscribe button on the bottom, this channel would double in size overnight, more than double. So if you're in that group of 63% and you appreciate the hard work that goes into putting these videos out there, I would definitely appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And oh, by the way, if you are a subscriber, make sure to turn on the notification bell. So when I do things like a surprise live stream, you know about it. If you don't have notifications turned on, you won't know when things like that crop up on the channel. So it's important to hit that notification bell as well. For those of you that follow the channel regularly, you'll notice there's a difference on the TX16S right away. I took my Grand Lotus stick ends off and replaced them with the stock ends. And it's because I wanted to try out these gimbal spacers. And with the Grand Lotus stick ends on, they were bumping into the case down here on the inner inner position all the way down and I wasn't getting full stick travel. So I had to put the stock ones back on. I just want to try it out and see what I think of it. And that way I can be informed if anyone asks questions about it. I may leave them on there for a while, who knows. All right, let's get started. Everything I'm about to show you today works on both radios. So I'll do some of the examples on the TX16S and I'll do some of the examples on the jumper. Let's get started with the TX16S first. The first shortcut I want to show you has to do with the channel monitor screen. Every time I do this on a configuration video, somebody invariably comes in and asks the question, how'd you do that? Here's the trick. When you're in the model setup, and I'll press the model button to get there. So I'm in the model setup screen, and if you're navigating around, this is a really useful tip because if you're starting to work with things like your rates or if you have a mix where you're adding mixer lines and changing the outputs, a really useful feature is to bring up the channel monitor so you can see the impact of the changes you're making to your configuration. And you do that just by pressing the model button. So while you're in a model setup and you press the model button again, you can see that you get this channel monitor. And the channel monitor lets you take a look at the outputs and it makes sure you have all the throws that you expect. And see the reason that's 5% off is because I have a trim on channel four, which is rudder, 5%. So I can reset that to zero and I'll get rid of the 5%. And I can see that the 95% limit is due to my rate. If I bring my rate switch down to low rates, then it switches to 40. So it's just a really nice little trick while you're editing a model to see what's going on with your throws. If you've had OpenTX for any length of time, you probably already know this, but if you're a newbie, you probably don't. And that's how to capitalize text inside a text field. So I'm gonna show you how to do it real quick. I'll just press the model button and get into a text field. In this case, it's the model name. I'll press the jog dial, which highlights the first character. And then let's say that I want that capital S to be a small s. You simply do that by long pressing the jog dial. And see, now it's a small s. And then likewise, if you want that s to be capitalized, you just long press it again, and that capitalizes it. All right, the next one I'm gonna show you is a really cool tip. I didn't know this until about a year ago, and it has to do with curves. So this is one that I don't expect a lot of people are going to know. But let's say in this model on the rudder, I want to apply it. I'm just going to apply a curve. Let's just say curve custom and I've got one. We'll call it REF. So see, I've applied this custom curve REF. Well, that's nice. And when I look at that curve, if I'm using my rudder, my stick moves along that curve and that's nice. But what if I want to change that? Well, the obvious answer is to hit escape and then tab over to curves and then find ref and then go down and edit it right that's the obvious thing but let me show you a shortcut when i learned this this is like a v8 moment i smacked myself on the forehead while you're in the curve field on any of these fields when you highlight the curve name just long press the jog dial and it brings you straight to the curve how cool is that the next tip I'm going to show you has to do with editing curves themselves. So let's say that I'm in this curve and I want to change the value of 20 to negative 20. Well, check this out. If I long press on this field, I can just select mirror and that flips my curve. So if I want to flip a curve and I do that all the time, you just hit mirror and that way you don't have to scroll back and forth. I think I've even done videos where I've scrolled back and forth. So it's just a nice little shortcut. If you long press on either one of these fields, 
you can say, hey, let's flip this, and it flips the curve. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> Isn't that neat? And then another thing I'll show you is that while you're in here, if you click on preset, you can select predefined curves so up to 45 degrees. So let's say I want an 11 degree curve and I hit enter. There we go. That's an 11 degree curve. If I want a 45 degree curve, I can press enter and there's my 45 degree curve. See how it splits the 90 degrees right up the middle? That's 45 degrees. Isn't that cool? Well, there you go. Just a couple little handy tricks while you're editing curves to save yourself some time. The next thing I want to show you has to do with global variables. And while it's not necessarily a trick, I know some of you are starting to explore global variables because I've had some questions about it. Well, so let's go into the global variable field and you notice how you've got FN zero all the way across on here and there's a number negative 27. Well, I don't know if you knew this or not, but if you long press on this field, you can edit the global variable and you can give it a name. Let's say you want this to be weight. Let's say you're using global variable one for weight. If you give it a name in here, then anywhere that you use global variable one, it'll get this name, which can be really helpful. You can also specify a unit, either numeric or percent. So if you click this, you'll get a percentage, which is a percentage change. So if you have a weight of say 100 and you reduce it by 10%, that'll bring your weight down to 90. If your weight is 50 and you reduce it by 10%, it reduces you to 45. So there might be some advantage to using percentage by just clicking on the unit. If you want to use a straight up numeric, you just click it again and you'll go back to these dashes and you can use a straight up numeric. You can also set a min and max range for the global variable. So if you don't want that to be very high or low, let's say just like I did the safety curve, you can say I want this global variable to never be lower than negative 15. And you can say I never want it to be higher than say, 15. Now by doing that, you limit any damage the global variable could do by overstressing a servo or making your weights crazy or whatever. So it's just a safety fence. That's the way to think about it. And then finally, you can specify the global variable per flight mode. So if you start learning how to use flight modes and global variables, you can quickly see how in this field you can say, oh, okay, so for flight mode zero, I want my weight to be um, 100. And to change it for flight mode one, you long press it and notice how it changes to a numeric. So once you've gotten into that field, you can say I want flight mode one to have my weight no higher than 10. And for flight mode two, I want it to be no higher than zero and so on. You get the idea. Now when we exit out of this screen, you can see the global variable now has a name and it has variables set per flight mode. So if you learn how to use these flight modes, and we have, we, there is a video on the channel about how to use flight modes, you can start to see how very, very convenient that could be if you want to tune your plane dynamically in flight. Get it? Okay, I'm going to switch over to the jumper now and do the rest of the configuration tricks on the jumper. The next tip is a navigation aid for logical switches. So let's say we're editing a model. And by the way, if you long press the page button, you go backwards. That's a little sub tip. I don't know if you knew that or not, but long press the button, you go backwards. So let's say we're in editing a logical switch and I have to choose a function that lets me have a list of all the sources. So we'll choose edge, that'll work. And let's say we're scrolling around and I say, oh, I wanna use logical four. So I scroll down and I find logical four. There it is, I got logical four. And then I say, wait a minute, I didn't want logical four, I want not logical four. Here's the tip, press enter on the field so that you can edit it and then long press the jog dial and you can see this option at the bottom is invert. So if you scroll down to invert and hit select, it changes it to not logical four. How cool is that? So that'll save you from scrolling through that entire list. Like if I wanted to switch this back to logical four, you have to scroll through this entire list and go hunt it down again. And it's kind of a pain in the neck, to be honest with you because there's a lot of stuff on here. So there it is, that, that's how long it took me. But if you just long, if you enter it and then long press it, you can go down to invert and bam, it's inverted. I think that's a cool tip. It should save you a lot of editing time. And while we're in here, there's one other thing you can do in this context menu. If you long press the button, you can see it brings up a list of sources. So it, this saves you a lot of time too. If you say, well, I'm looking for a trim, so you can highlight trims and it brings you right to the trim field. You got rudder right, rudder left, elevator down, elevator up, 
throttle down, throttle up. See, it brings you right to the trim switches. And if you say, well, I want, I want logical switches, it can go right down to logical switches. So just a couple quick little navigation aids to help you speed through the selection process when you're configuring your logical switches. All right, here's another one. Let's say that in logical zero one, we made this really complex thing. We've got logical one, we've got timer set up, we've got the second variable defined, and we've got an and switch selected, and then we realize for, we want minimum duration set to 0.3. Okay, so a lot of work to create that one. Now let's say you're gonna duplicate that, but you want it to be for logical two. Well, instead of doing all of that again, all you have to do is put your cursor on L01, long press, and hit copy. You hit copy, now you can come down to L02, long press again, and hit paste. And now all you've got to do is make your adjustment to the logical switch you want to operate on. So let's say we want this to be logical three. All right, so copy paste works. And then one other thing, since we're in here as well, if you don't like this entry at all and you want to get rid of it, all you have to do is long press and hit clear. And there you go. So just a couple little tricks to speed up your navigation while you're working with logical switches. And by the way, that works for logical switches and special functions. The same concepts work in both tabs. All right, next up I've got some hidden little carrots. And for those of you who are into the weeds on details, you'll like these. So from the home screen, long press the jog dial, scroll down to statistics. You've got session time. That's how much time the radio has been on. You've got overall battery cycle time and then information about your throttle percentage and your timers. And while you operate your throttle, notice that the radio shows you a little histogram of where the throttle is on the curve. Isn't that cool? So if you like those types of details, there you go. And now I got one other little hidden gem in here, and that's that if you hit page right, there's a line item that shows how much free memory is available on the radio. There's some other stats in here. I won't even pretend to know what they all are, but if you want to look them up, the point is you've got some debug information. So if you're into that kind of detail, you can go look this stuff up and see what it tells you. From the home screen, if you long press the jog dial and you go down to monitors and then hit long press page, you can see that you bring up a logical switch monitor. So if you're ever wondering which logical switches are on and off, you can come in here and see all of them in a glance. The other thing I'll point out in the logical switch monitor is that once you highlight a logical switch, if you have it configured, the parameters of that configuration show up on this bottom row. So remember L1, we did that complex edge thing with all the timer things. That's the configuration we have for logical one. And then I can scroll over to four and see what four is. Four is my throttle cut. So this says if my throttle is off idle and SH is up, then, then L4 is active. And that's the case. If I hold SH down, then four is off so it's just a nice little channel monitor to show you what's going on on your radio all right i've got one more tip to show you and i'm going to have to do that on the tx16s if you watch the video i did on the undocumented features of the tx16s you'll know that one of our subscribers lasers b found out that you can press the trim switches on the radio down so if i press t6 in toward the radio Notice that it highlights both up and down simultaneously, which is really cool. If you want to use that as a momentary switch, you can. The problem is you'll get audio prompts indicating you reach the top or bottom of the trim travel. And if you cross through center, you'll get prompted on that as well. And they beep. So here, check this out. Trim center. Minimum trim reached. Trim center. Trim maximum. You don't want that if you're going to continue to use T5 and T6 as momentary switches. So here's how you turn that off. Let's escape back to the main screen and from the model menu go into flight modes and then go all the way over in flight mode 0 all the way over to the end and you'll notice trim 5 is highlighted. You simply click on that field and change it to a dash dash. Click on that field again on 6, change it to a dash dash. Now when you do that and press on T6 you get no audio prompts, and I'll show you that the T6 switch is still working. I'll press T6 and you'll see the up and down are both illuminated at the same time. There we go. Now no beeps. So I'm holding it down and we're not getting any beeps. Well, there you go. 10 little tricks for navigation and configuration on the OpenTX platform. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please consider leaving a thumbs up and a comment and share the video. That'd be awesome. And if you're in the market for one of these radios, I would definitely appreciate it if you consider using my affiliate links. 
they'll be in the description. If you do that, the channel gets a little commission and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Banggood pays for that. Well, that's all I've got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you some navigation and operating tips on the Jumper T18. Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how. Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you some navigation shortcuts and operating tips for the Jumper T18 and the TX16S. Configuration not operating. Hello, welcome back to RC Beep. Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you some navigation shortcuts and some kid can. Blah, blah, blah. Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you some navigation short tut short tuts. Come on, man. For those of you, for those of you, for those of you, everything I'm about to show you today, enunciate. Everything I'm about to show you today will work on both radios. So I'll do some of the configuration. Beep, beep, beep. We're going to start that whole thing over. The problem is that if you press these buttons, you get beeps and warnings about. The problem is that if you continue to press these buttons, you get beeps about servo travel reached. The problem is that if you press these buttons, you'll get audio prompts if you reach the bottom or top of your servo. The problem with leaving. The problem is beep, 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 beep.